Ah, yes, we've all been there before. This shit is more than a game, man. And now, these shirts are more than a game. But did you know that this merch wasn't made only for sportswear? No sorry. This shit more than a game is a lifestyle brand. You can wear the shirts for anything, such as going shopping, working out, ah, this shit more than a game, doing chores, setting the mood. Oh yeah, that's that thing I like. Changing a tire. Grabbing a bank. Go, 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 go. Jumping a falcon's fan. And so much more. So purchase your official This Shit More Than A Game merch today for the low starting point of $28.03. And let the world know This Shit More Than A Game. Warning, please see a doctor if you feel you've gone too far with taking This Shit More Than A Game. This shit more than a game is not associated or licensed with any organization or entity except for John o Bones LLC. This shit more than a game is not responsible for any fights caused by the shirts. John o Bones LLC does not promote or recommend violence of any kind, unless it's at the expense of a Falcons fan. That dude, like the Kubrick guy who with the Shining movie, is that him? Man, Clint, Clint Kubiak, he, he, um, you don't even know who he man, is. He was the <laughs> offensive clown. coordinator for the Minnesota Vikings in 2021. I'm pretty sure they made the playoffs that year. He was the You're passing game sure? coordinator for the Broncos in 2022. Um, okay, that must have been a Daniel Haggins fault for that year. But look, he's the passing game coordinator for the San Francisco 49ers. What is San Francisco 49ers at right now? Going to the Super Bowl with Brock Purdy leading he's the way. What? Man, man, what you mean? He's on his office recording. He, he, I know, but what baby, is he? Baby. Wait, what is he? What's his current job? Passing game coordinator. No, man, look, he's not the Saints office recording. He's not I even a coach. I want you to know something. The New Orleans Saints are back, and they share more than the game. We're back, baby. That's We're not back. the first time I've heard this. What you mean? You said that when DA got hired. Yeah, but he didn't have his quarterback then. <laughs> I wasn't done, because then you said it again last year. When yeah, we got but Derek Carr. It, that's when we had Pete Carmichael. Now we really got everything. We got DA, we got Carr, we got the office of minor guy, baby, we're back. And I got good news. I got good news. Guess what? No, no, Guess no, what? no, 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 no. Guess what? Guess what? What? The Super Bowl is in New Orleans next year. So and? you ain't even got to worry about me using your credit card oh to buy flight. God. What? Right. What, baby? You know right. this shit more than a game. You know this shit more than a game. Leave me alone. Can y'all feel it? Can y'all can y'all smell it? Can y'all hear it? Can y'all see it? All of your senses just going crazy right now. Cause you know what that is? You know what that feeling is? It's called hope. That feeling is called hope. See, I, I, I've seen the script many times in my lifetime. This is how it always begins, right? All of the diehard rabbit fans all season long. I'm tired of this team. I'm done with them. I'm done with Dennis Allen. Nothing. Nothing is going to get me back on the bandwagon. And the front office says, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll see y'all. We'll see how y'all feel come February. We'll see how y'all feel come March. You see, after Sunday, when the Super Bowl winner is pronounced, the offseason officially, truly begins for all 32 teams. And you know what happens? All of that emotion that you garnered throughout September to December and January, it all starts to subside a bit, okay? You all get distracted. You start going, looking at hobbies to do over the weekends. You start looking at Pelicans basketball. Shout out to the Pelicans. You start doing a lot of things that's not centered around football. And so your emotions subside. And what does the football teams do? Specifically, specifically we're talking about the Saints. Oh, they'll do some free agency moves or some coach signings or some trades or some draft picks that slowly but surely gets every fan back on the cycle of hype. And so what did the Saints do? We all predicted this. We knew that P. Carmichael was going to be the fall guy. Everybody saw that coming a mile away. All right? So I started noticing it already on Friday when the news came out that the Saints were going to hire Clint Kubiak. 
okay? You started seeing fans say, oh, wow. Oh, wow, we finally are going away from the Sean Payton office. Oh, wow, we got a brand new vision of offense. Elvin Kamara is going to thrive. We're going to run a lot more motion. We're going to run a lot more unique run patterns. We're going to have a lot more style, a lot more storytelling to the offense. Things are looking up. The offense is going to be much better. And that's how they get you. And that's how it starts, folks. That's how it starts. You see, everybody might say that, and they be like, ah, oh, but you know, I'm still not going to believe in Dennis Allen and Derek Carr. Okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see. Because wait till then March comes. And then wait till April comes and we have the draft. And wait till we start signing for ages. And you know what's going to happen? I'm not going to say every fan. I'm not going to say that a lot of people right now in the chat or people who watch it right now are going to go back on the bandwagon. But I guarantee you, at least half the fan base, at least half the fan base. It's going to jump back on the bandwagon. It's going to say, you know what? With this brand new offense, we're going to do good. We're going to make the playoffs. The NFC side ain't all that good, isn't it? Y'all feel it, right? Y'all smell it, right? Just go and look at Adam Schefter's tweet when he announced about Clint Kubiak last Friday. And look at all the Saints fans that were like, this is awesome. This is awesome. Saints fans ain't know who Clint Kubiak was from a goddamn paper bag two months ago. But now <laughs> you, you, you get excited, right? That's how they get you. But that's great. I'm not saying this as a criticism. This is how they get you. This is what makes fanaticism fun. Peel back the curtain a little bit. This is why I have fun with the basis of what fanaticism is in all of my skits. I make fun of that. Like, fanaticism has no logic. Fanaticism is supposed to make you stupid. Yes, this isn't life or death. It's a sports. This shit more than a game. But this isn't life or death. It's supposed to be stupid. It's supposed to remove your logic. So, of course, of course, us hiring Clint Kubiak, and it's not official yet, but it will be after the Super Bowl, it's going to have at least 50%, I guarantee you, of the fan base saying, you know what? You son of a bitch, I'm back in. You can start seeing it last week. You saw it on Saints Twitter. You saw the fans getting excited. That's how they get you. That's why Mickey Lewis don't be caring about what we say from September to January, because they know we're going to go come back and give them our money and give them our hype once the offseason comes. That is what makes fanaticism great. I love fanaticism. It is just so, so, huh. What do I always say, folks? And around and around and around we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the John O'Ballin Show. What is shit more than a stream? Yeah. Yeah. Lights, camera, action. Big bit. I push it to the mother, mother, <laughs> nigga. Let's get it. Brian and me, we gon' get it, get it, get it, get it. Caught, I was down, I said, look the dealer. Let's get it. Everywhere we go, we keep it in it. Don't you know you Let's get it. Big the Stacks and I beat that. How you beat the charge? Let me make it hard. You think he on the broad? How you living, Lord? How you got the cause? One thing you won't do is pull my car. Still about that shit. Got a couple killers in this bitch. Still on my gizmo shit. Inspect the gadget and extend the clip. Savage life like my two. Bring it home like Roscoe. They got guns that ain't cocked, dude. Y'all saw shot tacos. Got a couple niggas doing fair time. Kept it G and never dropped a dime. Locked it down like prime time. No blood game, but I call him slime. Serve him up like it's lunchtime. Big truck like a Ready for it, what time? One phone call, call this bad time. Let's get it. Ryan and me, we gon' get it, get it, get it, get it. Caught, I was down, I said, look the dealer. Let's get it. Everywhere we go, we keep it lit. Don't you know you get it. Big business, take them to get it. When it's me that I can't get it. Cause I'm from here, I'm on the mission. Get it. When it's me that I can't get it. more than a game and y'all know how we gotta start off this show man to keep the good energy keep the vibes going strong 
Keep the culture, as the New Orleans Saints is very, very hard on. Keep the culture strong. Leave it a shit more than the game in the chat right now before we start off this solo edition yet again of the John O'Bond Show. What's up, everybody? I appreciate you all joining for, joining me on this Tuesday, one week before Mardi Gras. And y'all know, right? For Mardi Gras, mm -hmm. everywhere else next week, it's just going to be Tuesday. But down here, this shit more than a Tuesday. Hope you guys are having a good night tonight. Hope you guys are nice and warm because we got a lot to talk about. Thank God for the Saints, right? Like, even though this is the offseason, the Saints are still giving me some good content to talk about. And the main thing, the most important thing that we have to talk about is that the report came out, and I'm sure you guys have seen the news by now, that the New Orleans Saints are hiring Clint Kubiak to be our officer coordinator. Now, if you're not familiar with Clint Kubiak, let me pull up his resume for you guys, okay? Clint Kubiak, he is currently in the Super Bowl right now, which is why the hiring has not been made official. And he is the passing game coordinator. So he's not technically the offensive coordinator, but his main duties are to make Brock Purdy look as good as Brock Purdy has looked this past season. Before then, he was with the Broncos, and he was the passing game coordinator for them as well as the quarterback's coach. Now, I'm going to be honest. I need a little bit more uh, detail on what's the difference between the passing game coordinator and the quarterback's coach, but – I don't know, maybe I'll have on uh, Nick Underhill or somebody to teach me that. <laughs> uh, and obviously, you know, if you look at the 2022 Broncos season, that ain't much to write home about. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that he was with the Broncos in 2022. And in 2021, he was the Minnesota Vikings officer coordinator. Prior to that, he was the quarterback's coach from 19 to 20 for the Minnesota Vikings. Obviously, Kirk Cousins, love him or hate him, is a pretty good quarterback. So all I have to say, his resume looks very, very impressive. He is a descendant of the Shanahan coaching tree, which is the greatest coaching tree apparently right now. If not him, the McVay coaching tree. Everybody wants one of those guys on their teams to run the offense. And he is the son, I believe. Oh, forgive me. I should do my research. This is why this is a John O'Bone show and not like some professional Saints show. <laughs> the son of Gary Kubiak, legendary coach who won a uh, Super Bowl with the Denver Broncos. So his resume is actually impressive, right? His resume is actually impressive. And here's what I'll say. Here's what I'll say. Unless we were going to hire John Gruen, fans would have got hyped up over whoever the hell we hired. Let's be real. That's what we do as fans, guys. We hype ourselves over whoever the hell we were going to hire. We had some pretty cool candidate names in the drawing for all the people that we interviewed. We all knew we were going to get hyped up over whoever. Like, I guarantee you, and I want y'all to be honest in the chat right now. Be honest. If you knew who kept, yes or no question. Let's do it that way. Yes or no. Did you know who Clint Kubiak was before last Friday? It's a simple yes or no question. Put it in the chat. Did you know if get who Gary Kubiak, Clint, Clint Kubiak was before Friday. I just, I, that's an honest, this is a safe space, guys. This is a safe space. No, I'm not saying that to like knock the high or say, oh, you know, what I'm saying is this. That's why fanaticism is great. Like I say in my rant, because we are going to talk ourselves into whoever. <laughs> like we will be like, oh, okay, you know, anybody but Pete, right? Anybody but Pete. Seeing the chat right now, and I appreciate the honesty. My wife says no. Trav says no. Mr. Fillmore says yes. Jermaine says yes. Sandra says yes. Hurricane Mikey says no. And that's the thing, guys. That's the thing. Okay, I appreciate the honesty. Not everybody's going to know all of these coaches. And I don't expect every fan to know every goddamn offensive assistant, passing game coordinator, defensive assistant, quantity coach, et cetera, et cetera, in the NFL. I'm not going to lie. Not like I knew. I knew some of the names that we were interviewing. I didn't know who Clint Kubiak was until we were reported to be interviewing for him. That's when I brushed up my knowledge on him. Okay. St. <laughs> John says, Clint who? Exactly. And that's fine. That's fine. Like, again, you know, like the, the, the general people, the, the 60,000 plus people in the Superdome, they're general fans. They're not like diehard rabbit knowing every single person on every single roster, every single coaching staff. But I guarantee you, 50% of that damn fan base is going to talk themselves into Clint Kubiak as if he's the greatest thing in the world. And he might be. He might be. I like the signing because it's, it, it, it does one thing. It finally moves us away from the Sean Payton era. It makes, I know, technically, as long as we got Dennis Adam, we're still trying to recreate the Sean Payton era. But we're no longer looking in the real, real mirror. We're finally driving forward, okay? How successful is the offense going to be? That remains to be seen. But we're finally, I give them credit, they're finally looking forward. And granted, 
they obviously weren't 100% sold on Pete Carmichael the past two seasons anyway. I mean, they had to beg Pete Carmichael to keep the job. So it's not like they have been always dead set on Pete Carmichael. But it's great to finally have something different. Here's the dilemma. Here's the dilemma. Because a lot of you guys are way over Dennis Allen. So say that Clint Kubiak turns this offense around. Now, here's the, this is another thing. We Believe it or not, as crazy as last season was, we won nine games. And I'm not trying to like put that as a feather in the cap towel season. No, it was still a horrible season. But we won nine games. So the question is, how much better can Clint Kubiak really make us? Like, is he that good that he can move the needle for 10 wins or 11 wins? I would love to see that. I don't personally think so. I mean, we won nine games. Like, it's not like we are a three or four win team. We are a nine win team. We are in that purgatory that we keep talking about. Is Clint Kubiak a final piece to get us out the purgatory and back into the gates of heaven? We'll see. But if he does... If he does, you guys realize that means more Dennis Allen, right? You guys realize that means more Derek Carr, right? So for the fans who are hyped up about this move, you do realize that if Clint Kubiak is successful, the odds are that means that Derek Carr is successful, and the odds are that that means that Dennis Allen is successful, and the odds are that means that Dennis Allen gets a contract extension in 2025. Now, here's my thing. As much as I'm over Derek, I mean, Dennis Allen, I'm – I'm not thrilled by it, but he's wearing black and gold laundry for another year, so I'm cheering for him. I'm always cheering for him. Don't let the rat of me, don't let the rants of me ever get it messed up. I'm always going to cheer for him as long as he's wearing my team colors. I'm going to just call out the bullshit when I see it. But he's wearing black and gold laundry again, so I am cheering for him, even though I feel like we all know where his peak is. And so I realized that if Clint Kubiak improves this offense, that we are going to be with Dennis Allen for more years. And then you got to ask yourself, are you excited about that? Do you guys want more Derek Carr and Dennis Allen? Y'all saw Derek Carr is reported that he's going to restructure his contract. I'm not surprised by that. We all saw that coming about. Like Derek Carr is here not only for next year, but he's probably here for 2025 as well. So we are kind of in this Dennis Allen, Derek Carr era for the foreseeable future. And you got to ask yourself, folks, are you excited about that? Do you want Clint Kubiak to be successful that much that you are going to lock yourselves into multiple more years of Derek Carr and Dennis, uh, and Dennis Allen? It's a great dilemma, right? It's a great dilemma. I hope that the offense improve. I mean, God, you would think that it would improve, right? But I'm also of the belief that our talent is aging. Uh this past season was the first time where Elvin Kamara started to not look like Elvin Kamara so much. Now, I'm not saying that that means that he's over the hill. I want to see how he looks with a new offensive system, but it's also running back age. It's like dog age. You age it by seven years, not by one year. So you have to start wondering how much thread on the tires does Elvin Kamara have. And then you got Olave. And the question still remain: how legitimate of a number one receiver is he? A.T. Perry, a lot of potential, but we got to see it for a course of 17 games. So I'm looking forward to seeing the concepts and the play designs that Clint Kubiak cooks up with the New Orleans Saints. <laughs> but I did have to stop, stop and think, okay, now I'm cheering for his success, his success. That means that I'm cheering for Dennis Allen and Derek Carr to be with the Saints for multiple more years past 2024. So I want to know. What are you guys' thoughts? Are you guys hopeful that Clint Kubiak is going to be successful, knowing that that means, because I'm when I say Clint Kubiak is successful, that means that Clint Kubiak is the final piece to finally get this goddamn team over the home and get us in the playoffs, okay? Obviously, if we don't make the playoffs next year, there ain't no way. Like, unless we are the number one offense in the league, and yet the defense just took a horrible step back, Clint Kubiak will be gone just like the rest of the regime because I imagine next year is playoffs or bus. But are you guys cheering for Clint Kubiak to be successful knowing that that means that Derek Carr and Dennis Allen will continue to be here for multiple years? Or, or are you not impressed with the signing at all and you feel like we're still stuck in this state of purgatory and you just don't give a damn? Let me know. Let me know, because like I said in my rant, if you saw the reactions on Twitter, even the most jilted of fans was excited about the move, and that's how it starts. That's how it starts. You could be jilted and be like, oh, man, that's a good move, but I'm not, I'm not back on the bandwagon. Yeah, I still don't think that we're going to be that good. Okay, that's what a lot, of, a lot of people are saying right now. Then, of course, again, wait till free agency. 
wait till the draft. We're going to get somebody that get the fans even more riled up. And then by June, you know what? The Saints actually might do it this year. They might finally put all the pieces together. You watch and see. You watch and see. St. John says, who wouldn't root for Kubiak to be successful? That's wild. Now, now you might say that that's wild, St. John. Shout out to St. John. Y'all check out his YouTube channel. But there are fans who still right now are so over the Dennis Allen era, they just don't give a damn. And they are actively cheering against us. Now, that might sound crazy. My opinion on that is that we've seen so much data already on Dennis Allen and Derek Carr that I'm not mad at the fans who are like, whatever, I don't give a damn. And if they are cheering against us because they feel like long-term game is much more positive than short-term gain by not making the playoffs next year and starting over, like being forced to, like, I feel like we made the playoffs. The fan base is going to force Mickey Loomis to finally make a goddamn move. I can't be mad at that. I, I cannot be mad at that. I know it sounds sacrilegious, right? How, how dare you cheer against your own team? How dare you want your team to fail? But when we've been fed this shit platter the past two seasons and Mickey Loomis has told us that it's peanut butter and it's not shit, I can't get mad at the fans who are like, nah, I'd rather just keep losing so we can really blow this damn thing up and have somebody else come in and run the ship. Slim Sal, what's up, says his hopes are not up. Hurricane Mike says he doesn't care. If we are a good team, he doesn't care who is running the ship. I'm not, I'm the same way as Mikey. Like, I'm not, I don't think Dennis Allen is ever going to bring us to a Super Bowl, but I'm of the fanaticism level that even though I'm going to complain about it, if Dennis Allen is wearing my black and gold laundry for another year, I got to cheer for him to succeed, right? Ziggy, who is not on the show today, but he is in the chat, and we always appreciate that, Ziggy. Ziggy's been very busy this past two weeks, guys, but he promised you, he promises you guys he will be back for the next edition. He makes a Ziggy promise, and Ziggy don't make no promise that Ziggy can't keep. Ziggy says, as long as the Saints are winning, I don't care if Gale is the coach. <laughs> I agree, Ziggy. I agree. Sandra says, doesn't anyone think that the team needed to get and started doing so during the latter part of the season? Uh, time to jail, I believe is what she means. Uh, I think that I feel like that's almost a, a type of excuse that uh, Mickey will use, uh, Sandra, because I mean, CJ Stroud and D'Amico Ryans were both rookies at their positions for the Texans. D'Amico Ryans being a rookie head coach, CJ Stroud being a rookie quarterback. And it take them long to jail. They got to it right away. They made the playoffs. NFL, right? What does NFL stand for? Not for loan. <laughs> Ain't no patience in the NFL. I get it, though. We did finish the season strong. Now, granted, some might say us oh, because of the quality of our opponents. You can only play who's on your schedule. But I feel like, Sandra, that might be a tad bit, just my opinion, just my opinion, of a Mickey Loomis talking point, saying, ah, look at how much we jailed us the season went alone. Man, I ain't got time for that. We had the worst schedule in the league. We should have been jetting in week one. That's just how I feel. Chronicles says, what up, Chronicles? Whenever Carl starts in a new system, he doesn't thrive until year or two. Trust him. I watched this shit for five years, for five times in nine years with my team, although Kubiak makes it easier on QB. So as a Raiders fan, Chronicles is telling us that we should be excited about what Derek Carr is going to do in 2024. I got to see it to believe it, Chronicles. I got to see it to believe it. Because I already see some fans on social media and whatnot, like showing Derek Carr stats for 2020. And Derek Carr has a great way of doing this, right? Like, if you look at the, whenever you look at the end of the season, you look at Derek Carr's stats, you're like, he wasn't that bad. He actually, his stats were comparable to Jalen Hurston, close to that. Like, he wasn't that bad of a quarterback. I feel like Derek Carr, that's been Derek Carr's story for the past, his whole career, honestly. And that's fine. Like, it's technically true, but. It's one thing to look at the stats, then it's one thing to actually live and die with Derek Carr week after week. And it's like, yeah, but when you see it up close, man, it's like, I just, I mean, he's a statue in a pocket. He doesn't make plays on the fly. The stats do look good, though. That's the Derek Carr effect. Some fan, actually, some Raiders fan say before last season, as I guess the devil's advocate to you, Chronicles, he said, Derek Carr is always good enough to not have you as the worst team in the league, but he's never good enough to have you in the playoffs. He's almost like a perfect fit right now for this purgatory that we're in. Derek Carr will never have you as a bottom five team, but Derek Carr will also never have you as a top 12 team. And so what? Is this the year that we, I mean, it shouldn't be no more excuses now, right? Like new offensive coordinator, 
your healthy wide receivers like what more does Carr need at this point he better succeed in 2025 i mean 2024 but i hear what you're saying chronicles i do hear what you're saying all this to say again i'm very happy with the move of clint kubiak to the new orleans saints i know it's not official yet they're going to make it official after the super bowl i hope that he brings some fun back to the offense because for the skilled players that we have how boring our offense was last season was a crime against humanity so I'm hoping he brings some fun back. And if it leads to us succeeding and making the playoffs, of course, great, great. That's what we, that's what we all, even the most drifted fan is going to be excited if we make the playoffs. But I still, I mean, again, we won nine games last year, guys. We weren't a bottom five team. We won nine games. It, it, it didn't feel that way. Like the season felt like it was just like going to the dentist, right? Just excruciating. But we did win nine games last year. I am just trying, and this, I have a long offseason to ponder it, but does this Clint Kubiak guy, is he going to make the offense that much better that he can take us from the nine wins we are already at and give us a plus one, a plus two wins, which will obviously, I will imagine, 10 or 11 wins wins you the division or makes you at least a wild card team, right? Is Clint Kubiak that good? We're going to see. We're going to see. But that's how they get you. That's how it starts. You get a little excited. You're like, hey, that was a good move. That was a good, you know, this Clint Kubiak guy, he has a nice little resume. He's under the coaching tree of Gary Kubiak and Kyle Shanahan. He's going to have the office looking exciting. You, you get a little bit of hope. You get a little bit of hope. And then slowly but surely, you know, we draft somebody who's exciting. We sign a free agent who's exciting. And Mickey Lewis going to be like, yep, come me. Y'all give me that goddamn money. F y'all talking about some y'all going to boycott with y'all wives. Get the hell out of here. Seen the script a million times, folks. I've seen the script a million times. Uh, Ziggy said, oh, No, 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 hold on, Ziggy. You, you commenting too much, Ziggy. If you, if you could comment, you could be on the show, Ziggy. <laughs> Ziggy says, I sound like him right now. We we, we did win nine games. <laughs> of course, Ziggy, even in the chat, is going to bring his positivity. Uh, of course, my dog Chronicles, who has no skin in the game, by the way, he's a Raiders fan, but he says, I'm rooting for you guys for 16 games next year, but not when we play the Raiders. That's going to be a good show, Chronicles. I know you're going to be on the John O'Bone show when we play the Raiders next year. And I appreciate the love and support, Chronicles. I appreciate over 50 people right now across all platforms watching the John O'Bone show. Thank you guys so very much. If you are watching on YouTube, can you please do me a big favor, guys, and hit that like button? Actually, I need more than just that. Can you guys do me one to two favors? What's up, John O'Bone Show community? Look, it's real simple. I just need y'all to hit that like button. And if you're new to the show, that subscribe button in three seconds to make this referee sad. Three, two, one. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Let's help the channel continue to grow. You can also help the channel continue to grow by sharing my channel with all your friends and family. Let's get the word out about how great the John O'Bonne show and the John O'Bonne's channel is. And you guys, if you can't happen to watch this show live, fear not, because my dog Ziggy has it where all of our streams go into multiple streaming platforms, all the big streaming platforms, at least like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Play, or whatever it's called, Alexa. It's on all of those platforms. So look at the description below after this video is posted on YouTube, and you can find out where you can find the John O'Bone Show across all streaming platforms. Don't forget to hit that bell notification so you can know whenever we go live because there's going to be a lot more pop-up John O'Bone Shows throughout the off-season. I'm going to try to do... Uh, more live episodes once breaking news occurs and things like that. So the only way that you can know it when I go live instantly is when you hit that bell notification. And of course, share the channel with all your friends and family and let them know, hey, this is a good channel and this shit more than the game. All right, so guys, the main topic that I want to talk about today is that Derek Carr responded to Michael Thomas's tweets from two weeks ago. And... I have that clip right now. So while this clip is playing, you guys, if you haven't heard it yet, let me know in the chat what is your opinion about Derek Carr's clapback to Michael Thomas. Let's hear what Derek Carr had to say about Michael Thomas's tweets. Um, <laughs> but I got to ask you about, about Michael Thomas because this happened just yeah. a few days ago. He threw you <laughs> under the bus on X. He, he was... 
he was talking with a fan. He, he's going back and with back and forth with fans about lack of production in the year he had. And he tweeted, and I'm going to quote it. Well, if I didn't get set up by a bad ball, I probably would have had a little light 1,000 yards this year, but could have, should have. I know, I get it, laugh out loud. And so essentially he's he's blaming you for the season-ending injury, and he did yes. it publicly. So yep. not only do I want your reaction, I'm also <laughs> curious, did he ever call you and tell you like, hey, bro, uh, you set me up, you know, you screwed me. The, re- the rest of the season was shot because of you. No, uh, well... I will answer that, and um, <laughs> I, I, I will start with saying this. I love Mike T. I really do. I love him. Um, you know, I think when I came in, he – I don't know how many years it's been, you know, where he's gotten hurt and didn't finish the year, but there was a lot of frustration there, you know. There was a lot of frustration that he had to deal with and answering questions and all the kind of – and I could see how that could wear on you, right? So that when it happens again, you know, um, goodness, you know, that – you know, it's probably hard on the head, you know, on the head and on the heart, you know, you're like, gosh, dang it, you know, and, you know, uh, it probably, I think, I don't even know exactly when it happened, but it probably wasn't the best ball. And I'm be completely honest, James knows, James, James played with me. I'm not going to throw a perfect ball 100 out of 100 times, but, you know, at the end of the day, you'll catch a ball. <laughs> you, know, you'll catch you know, it's, you know, I probably didn't throw the best ball, but, um, you know, if, if that's how he wants to view it and how he wants to see it, completely fine by me, you know, and I, and I, I understand also that when I came in the building, you know, you know, we have Chris Olave who they were trying to train to be the number one guy. So all of a sudden every rep and every read and practice is Chris first, you know, and, and, and as a superstar that Mike is and what he has been, I can understand you're dealing with all the injury noise you're dealing with now Chris has become a guy and he loves Chris, you know, that, that's his guy, Ohio state, all that. But I can understand where the frustration begins to build. You know, I can understand where all those things begin to take place. Um, but, you know, there was times during the season where he'd be frustrated or this or that. And I wouldn't, you know, tweet about it. I would just call him, you know, and I'd just be like, look, bro, like this is what it is, bro. We grow, we're grown men. We can talk about anything. And uh, every time that, you know, I went on there and, you know, talked to him, you know, there was times where I, I you know, went at him and c- confronted him about something and said something. And he probably, over time, with all the frustration, grew to not liking that, you know. Uh, but I've always just tried to tell the truth in love. And sometimes, you know, people don't like it, you know. But, you know, I, I hope Mike finds what he's looking for. I hope he gets everything he wants uh, in life because I do love Mike. Uh, but at that moment, I didn't really like it, you know. I was like, <laughs> you just just call me, bro. Like, yeah, you know, that's... to say this, to say all these things, like, I felt like it was like we're doing like some middle school thing, man. Just talk to me. And Mike was great about talking to me. But in that moment, you know, that's why I just try and stay off social media, man. There's so much love. There's so much hate. Just try to stay off it. Very, very PC answer compared to what he probably could have said. Now, of course, Fans were still mad on social media about it. And what I have above me right now is just my dude, Chris Ross, Ross Galu. He, he transcribed Derek, comment, Derek Carr's comments, so I'm just leaving it above. So if anybody joins the show right now, they can see on repeat what Derek Carr said about uh, Michael Thomas. But I'll say this, because as soon as Chris transcribed those tweets on social media, at least on Saints Twitter, of course, the majority was like, ah, what you mean, Derek Carr? You know, no, no. And I'm and I, you know, I put my butt out on the line given the platform that I have. And I was like, what are y'all, what are y'all mad about? Like, what what what's the problem with what Derek Carr is saying? Like, one, Michael Thomas came at Derek Carr first on a public forum. So if you come at my ass in public, I'm gonna respond to your ass in public. If that's the energy you want to keep, let's keep it that same way. I'm coming right back at you in public. Fans like, I, I, I leader of a quarterback shouldn't do that. Well, then the leader of a wide receiver shouldn't come call the quarterback out on public. You make it public, let's keep it public. And when you read the transcription of Derek Carr's comments, you, it, that's why I played the clip, because hearing it and seeing it can be two different things. Again, and a lot can get lost in translation when you read something compared to when you actually hear how somebody actually verbally said it, okay? So when I heard it, I was like, it sounds a lot better, a lot less shady shout out to my dog, than what it actually comes across when you read the transcription of what Derek Carr said. Now, I will say this. The uh, 
the Chris Olave mention, I feel like that was a little bit of Derek Carr type shit. You know, like I feel like that was a little bit of shit in there. He was like, well, you know, Mike, you ain't the number one receiver. So maybe that's why he was a little mad, you know, because he ain't that guy anymore. That to me was a little petty, but I don't mind that. I don't mind getting petty back with Michael Thomas. If Michael Thomas is going to call out Derek Carr on social media, Derek Carr has every right in the book to come back at Michael Thomas. And he did it in a very polite way, to be honest with you, like Sandra says in the chat. He did it in a very polite way. He could have went even harder at Mike and say, Mike, man, your ass been hurt for the past. And he, he did say it, but again, he said it in a very politically correct way. But he could have been like, man, this dude been hurt the past four years. Don't talk about no damn hospital ball. You, you get hospital balls everywhere, apparently, over your whole body because you always hurt. But he said it in a very politically correct way. I will say this, and I hate to always bring up this guy in comparison. Drew Brees probably would have started with the comment about, I love Mike. I just wish Mike would have called me in that moment instead of taking it to Twitter. And Drew Brees would have probably ended the comment right there. Whereas Derek Carr had to kind of get a little bit of a, well, you know, Michael Thomas ain't even the number one no more. So that's why he might be a little mad. <laughs> uh, Derek Carr, and I'm not mad at it, but Derek Carr does have a, a habit. He talks as if he has the resume sometimes of a, of a Patrick Mahomes. Like he is a very, very confident person. He doesn't have the resume, I believe, to be as confident as he talks sometimes, but he is a very, very confident, very, very arguably delusional person. Maybe you have to be delusional if you want to be great in your line of work. <laughs> but I don't think Drew would have mentioned the Chris Olave mentioning that, oh, you know, the team is trying to make Chris Olave the number one now. So we were phasing out Michael Thomas a little bit. I felt that was a little petty. In his politically correct way of Derek Carr to say that. But I have no problem either way of him coming back at Michael Thomas. Because if Michael Thomas wants to take it there on Twitter, then Derek Carr has every single right. And again, I know that Derek Carr does not have the goodwill of the who that nation that Michael Thomas has. So Derek Carr could have came on and said, I'm sorry, Mike is right. And the fans would have probably still ate his ass up because the fans are just so mad at Derek Carr right now that he cannot do anything right to the fan base right now. And Michael Thomas is, again, like a martyr to the Saints fans now. And he can, whatever Michael Thomas says is, is Bible, according to Saints fans. I love Michael Thomas. I love Michael Thomas. But I disagree with him calling out Derek Carr like that. And I have, I'm not, this isn't me, I guess, taking sides or anything. Because, again, Derek Carr did not have the season to be talking any type of Smack it to be saying, you know, you know, we did this and, uh, you know, you know, Dane's got now. Nah, I don't want to hear that, Derek Carr. You are a uh, 10 plus year played in the NFL now, man. Like, when are you going to actually put it together and stop always having reasons why we're not succeeding as a team or why you are in the top of the line quarterback? But just in this, just in this vacuum, in this vacuum of somebody calling out somebody on Twitter, I believe the person who got called out always has the right to answer back. Even if that person who got called out isn't Mr. Popular on social media, Derek Carr had every right in the book to answer back to Michael Thomas. So I'm not mad at Derek Carr on that end. I'm not saying that, oh, Derek Carr, because I, I, Mike, Mike is actually a bit right. Like Derek Carr was not that good this year. Derek Carr did throw a hospital game. I was at that game with my wife in Minnesota. That was a horrible pass that Derek Carr threw that got Michael Thomas hurt. But I'm just not going to act like Mike is perfect in this whole scenario either. And I'm not going to act like Derek doesn't have a right to defend himself or comment back on it. And Derek is right. Man, just pick up the phone. Call me. Derek seems like a very, he even said it. He, he could be confrontational. And again, he, he walks around with this aura about him, Derek Carr, as if he's Patrick Mahomes and he's not. So I'm sure that rubs teammates the wrong way sometimes. Like, dude, you haven't accomplished shit, to be honest, in your NFL career. Why are you like, walking around and getting on our case as if you have the, the resume of a Drew Brees, right? Drew Brees can holler at Michael Thomas and Michael Thomas be like, it's Drew Brees. I get it. You know, you're Derek Carr, dude. You, you, you got to put a little, you know, take a little bass out your voice. Take a, you know, you got a little too much dip on your chip. But at least Derek Carr does it behind the scenes where it should be handled and not get on Twitter and write sub tweets about Mike or even just flat out call Mike on Twitter. That's what I don't agree with. I am appreciative that it kind of verifies to us. Michael Thomas is showing us that not all of the players are on board the way Mickey Loomis and Dennis Allen would try to feed us this bullshit that everybody's all in. But at the same time, I believe Derek Carr has every right in the world to go back at Mike, and I'm glad that he did. Hopefully, they do talk it out. Mike isn't going to be a saint anymore. So honestly, this is all for nothing. Like All this is at this point now is just good content for people like me who rely on the saints sometimes to build up my engagement. Like it's great for me, 
from a selfish standpoint, it's great for me. Like, it gives me something to talk about. It's the offseason, and Michael Thomas and Derek Carr is giving me something to talk about. Thank you for that, guys. But as a guy who, if I was running the team, or even just as a fan who wants my team to succeed, like, man, handle that shit behind the scenes, y'all. Come on, now. Like, come on, Mike. Like, yeah, I know that you're the man on Saints Twitter and everybody loves you, so you know that whatever you put out some vague tweets about Danes not being great or uh, about the players that you know that the fans are mad at, everybody's going to be like, oh, hell, Mike. Oh, hell, Mike. But come on, dude. Come on, dude. So good for Derek for going back at Mike. Good for Derek. Um, I'll try to catch up to some of these comments because I do want to know what you guys say. As always, guys, the best way, though, because I'm a one-man show right now, so I'm trying to host and moderate and keep up with the comments is just leave a super chat a great super chat i don't want to i don't need a, a huge super chat but a 2083 super chat that would be really good and that would really grab my attention as all of these chats come and i'm trying my best to like keep up and see which relevant ones are ones to highlight but the ones that will really for sure get highlighted is if you leave a super chat and a perfect super chat to leave on this show of course it's a 2083 one but i see I am, I'm, I'm doing my best traders playbook says Carl pisses me off with his politically correct energy. Now, you see, though, that's the thing. Drew Brees was full of also politically correct energy, but Drew Brees is Drew Brees, and Derek Carr is Derek Carr. So, of course, it pisses you off when Derek Carr does it because you're like, well, he ain't no Drew Brees, so why the hell should I want to listen to what he has to say? Uh, trying to keep up, trying to keep up. Mont Dog, what am I doing? Mont Dog says, Carr has 100% of sporty <laughs> in his DNA. Uh, my girl Sandra says, this world is entirely too petty, so I appreciate when a person makes a conscious effort to avoid it. And I agree with that as well, Sandra. But this is New Orleans. This is New Orleans. My fam, my, my fam, my supporters. My supporters are mainly, my audience mainly is a New Orleans base, right? And one day New Orleans prides itself on as being petty. And I still feel that there was some pettiness in Derek Carr's answer when he mentioned about Mike Thomas not being a number one wide receiver anymore. Uh, Mr. O Universe says... If Michael Thomas would have scoop slammed Derek Carr, this would have already been over. Take it to the mat already. I, I, I ain't mad at that. WrestleMania 40, Derek Carr versus Michael Thomas. Maybe it'll take some heat off the rock for taking Cody Rose's spot at WrestleMania, right? <laughs> Slim Jones says, if Derek Carr was an elite quarterback, we would know by now. Burrow into the board. And that's, that's exactly my point either. Like, you know, but the, you know, Mickey Loomis and Derek and Dennis are going to talk about how, oh, we need more time to jail and it doesn't happen overnight. Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Again, look at the Texans. Ricky head coach, Ricky quarterback, made the playoffs their first season. They came out the gate swinging. When Sean Payne was our coach, Ricky year, we came out the gate swinging. And he had every excuse in the book at that point. Like, oh, man, we coming off Katrina. You know, players are just getting back into their houses. The city is just starting to rebuild. Got it done right away. So I don't want to hear, you know, I hate the talking point of, oh, we need more time to jail. Hell with that, man. It's the NFL. Not for loan. I'd have, you, I'd have, if you ain't shitting, then get off the pot. If you ain't shitting to get off the pot, that's my motto when it comes to the NFL when them people say, oh, we need more time. Time for what? I just watched the Texans make the playoffs. I saw Joe Burrow in the second season make it to the Super Bowl. As a, as a sophomore quarterback, this is going to be Derek Carr's 10th season. He still has not played a playoff game yet. Come on, now. Uh. Come on, now. Uh. Oh, look at that. We got some Super Chats. That's why I love y'all. I love y'all. Uh, and I asked for $2.83 Super Chats, and y'all always come with even... <laughs> I'm asking for the, the low minimum, and y'all still come. Like, I see Bruce saying, give me a five. I appreciate y'all. Really, I truly do. Traders Blaybook says, Breeze was politically correct, but he also put it on his shoulders. Now, I will give you that, Traders Playbook. I feel like Derek Carr doesn't always take accountability. And Derek Carr, when he does take accountability, he always has a yeah, but. Like, you know, yeah, I could have do a better pass, but. Well, Drew Brees would have been like, yeah, I could have threw a better pass. Drew Brees spoiled us, folks. Drew Brees was a unicorn, okay? I've, I've already accepted that. Drew Brees was a unicorn. We're probably never going to see a Drew Brees in a New Orleans Saint uniform in our lifetime, sadly. I hope that I'm wrong. But Drew Brees was a unicorn. He knew what to say. He knew when to say it. He was also the damn top five greatest quarterback of all time. Drew Brees was a unicorn. He gave us no issues off the field. Drew Brees was a unicorn. Even in the midst, and I tweeted this last week, in the midst, of those 79 seasons, because y'all saw Drew Brees open up a sliders in Metairie this past week. And I got to go check it out because I had sliders inside L a year ago. And it was pretty good, actually. This isn't a free endorsement or anything. Not that Drew Brees needs my endorsement. But sliders was actually pretty good. So I want to check it out. His new location in Metairie. And they asked him about, you know, how did he feel about the fans booing 
the Saints this past season. And, and it's just so – he's just so damn good at this. Like, he he gave the answer that Mickey Loomis should have gave. Well, remember Mickey Loomis basically said, yeah, I don't like it. And, you know, the reason why the Superdome is half empty, empty is because fans can't afford to go to the games. Drew was like, well, you know what? We set a high standard for this organization, and the fans have come to accept that standard. So they have every right to fail the way they feel. All you got to say, all you got to say, Mickey Loomis, all you got to say, Dennis Allen, all you got to say, Derek Carr. Damn, man, Drew Brees was a unicorn. Drew Brees is just, I knew we were going to miss him when he was gone, but damn, man. Even when he opens up a goddamn food chain and whatever, he shows us why we miss him so damn much. He just, he, he gets it. He gets it. He knows how to be a leader on and off the field. We were 79 for three straight seasons, and we always felt that days were optimistic because Drew knew what to say to make us calm. Well, as we got Dennis Allen apologizing to the Falcons, we got Mickey Loomis telling the fans that they're poor. And we got Derek Carr saying, ah, you fans don't know as much as y'all think y'all know. Come on, man. What are we doing here? Did y'all not know anything when Drew Brees was under the leadership? Come on, y'all. Brute Saint says, thank you for the super chat, by the way, Brute Saint. He says, call claps back at Michael Thomas. Hold on. <laughs> he is searching for a fuck to, to give. And I agree, Bruce Saint, because Michael Thomas is not going to be on the team next season. So, again, this is all ultimately just father for Saints fans to talk about during the offseason. Again, it's great for me. Selfishly, it's great for me. It gives me great content to rely on and talk about, but it, 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 it is not going to move the needle either way for the 2024 New Orleans Saints season. Unless, you know, the other wide receivers start piggybacking off of Michael Thomas and saying, yeah, hell with Derek Carr, but I doubt that. But you're right, Brute saying you have every right to be like, this doesn't matter. What does Rock say? It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. But it is the offseason, so it's something to talk about, right? And my dude, Traders Playbook, gave me yet another super chat. I appreciate you so much, Traders Playbook. He says, Carr talks like he's elite, but he plays like Jimmy J. I agree with that 100%. 100%. Carr talks as if he has the resume of a Drew Brees. Derek Carr talks as if he – and again, by the way, I'm actually on Derek Carr's side with all of this right now. Like, I'm on his side of how he clapped back against Michael Thomas. But Derek Carr, I have learned, does have a habit of talking as if he's – the shit. Like, oh, I'm a former MVP. I'm a multi-time all-pro player. I made the Pro Bowl five. Pro like, no, dude. You, you got to, you know, let's, let's dial it back a little bit sometimes with similar things. Shit. You don't have the resume or the credentials to talk as if you are Drew Brees. I'm not mad at what he said to respond to Derek Carr. I mean, to Michael Thomas. But he does have a habit overall as a person of talking where his credentials doesn't match the words that come out of his mouth. So I absolutely agree, Traders Playbook. Thank you guys for those super chats. St. John Butler said that Derek Jeter was the same way. Always said the right thing in interviews. And you know what, guys like Derek Jeter and Drew Brees also had the credentials to say whatever the hell they wanted to say. And they still found a way to say things that were perfect to make the fan base feel good. And they had the credentials to back it up. What's up to Jordan Williams Gaming who puts, well, on a screen it looks bad, but if you're watching it from YouTube, he has this. Let's go. Is that Carolina? You got to be on YouTube or Twitch, I guess, on Twitch. All right. Excuse me. I appreciate everybody who's watching on Twitch, by the way, too, guys. Again, we are not just on YouTube, but we are on Twitch. We're on X. We're on uh, Facebook. Hell, we might be on Blue Sky School. I, I saw Blue Sky opening it up for the public to join. So we might be on Blue Sky. So John O'Bone Show, baby. We show all the platforms love. <laughs> Let me get... Uh, to some Pelicans talk soon, though, guys. But I appreciate all of you guys' comments on the Michael Thomas versus Derek Carr beef. I have right now on YouTube, by the way, 30 likes. I appreciate you guys for that. If you are watching right now and you haven't hit that like button yet, hit the like button, man. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell notification so you can know every time the John O'Bond show goes on live because we are relying on you guys to take this channel to the next level. I really want to get a huge channel one day, and I can only do it by having a strong foundation of people like you guys. So I appreciate all the love and support every time you guys hit the like button, every time you hit the subscribe button, every time you guys show me love and share it with your friends and family and things like that. I truly do appreciate it. But all that to say, to close out this topic about Derek Carr and Michael Thomas, um, I believe Michael Thomas has some valid points. I do not agree with the way Michael Thomas went about making those points. But I do agree with the way Derek Carr responded to Michael Thomas's points. 
I am going to miss Michael Thomas. I am a fan of Michael Thomas. I am going to root for him unless he goes to an NFC team. I'm going to root for Mike wherever he ends up. I hope that he can get his career back on the track of being that great player that we saw from 2017 to 2019. And if y'all want me to be truthful, I appreciate them for giving me some content during the slow parts of this all season. So shout out to Derek Hall and shout out to Michael Thomas. Y'all keep doing that. Y'all, 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 if y'all if y'all are going to keep being as petty and going back and forth in public, it's great for the John O'Bone show. So uh, before we talk about the New Orleans Pelicans, folks, let us hear a word from one of our sponsors. Hey man, I can't believe you guys are still watching this crazy show. Because of that, you guys really deserve something special. Here's a gift just for you for being a fan. Are you going to a sports game or a concert or any major event? Well, buy your tickets from SeatGeek and use the promo code JONO at checkout and you can receive $20 off your purchase over $50. That's $20 off your purchase. What are you waiting for? You know this shit more than a game, man. And so now, let's talk about those guys right down the street from the, not even down the street, down the, down the building from the New Orleans Saints, the New Orleans Pelicans, man. The New Orleans Pelicans who are doing the damn thing. Shout out to the Pelicans, man. Did y'all see the Pelicans whip the Raptors ass yesterday? Man, the Pelicans are, they are the number, let me look it up right quick, because it changes like hour to hour. Right now, the Pelicans are the number seven seed in the Western Conference with a record of 29 and 21. That's not bad. That is not bad. And they have a big game tomorrow against the Los Angeles Clippers, followed by another big game against the Los Angeles Lakers. And yet, y'all can see it if you're watching on YouTube down at the bottom of the ticker, the Pelicans have zero All-Stars. Zero. Zilch. Nada. Meanwhile, the Los Angeles Lakers, who are 27 and 25, who are the number nine seed that aren't even in the playoffs right now, they had two All-Stars. Granted, LeBron James and Anthony Davis are amazing players. But I was more bothered by that than I think even Pelicans fans were because I was like, man, how are you the – I mean, we've been going back the past few weeks between the sixth seed and the eighth seed. But how are you a playoff team and you got zero All-Stars? And it's just been that type of season where even though the Pelicans are 29 and 21, it seems like the city has not really, the casual fans I'm talking about, hasn't really, the Pelicans haven't grabbed the attention of the casual fans yet. And by all means, the Pelicans are having a damn good season. The Pelicans are having a damn good season. I mean, again, our, our floor isn't that, you know, our ceiling, excuse me, our ceiling isn't that high, given our history. So 29 and 21 for the Pelicans is a damn good season so far. So I'm just a little surprised that the, Fan base hasn't really, not the passionate ones, like not the diehards, of course, but the like the casual fans haven't really like jumped on the bandwagon yet. And it's probably because we haven't, until the past two games, which I'll get into in a little bit, we haven't really played exciting basketball, I would say. The Pelicans hasn't really had like that until maybe last Friday, and I'll show y'all exclusive footage soon. Have an exci- had, had a moment, you know, like sometimes when you really just got to get the city or uh, fan base on board, you need like that moment in the season, like where something big happens. It could be a game winner. You want to talk football terms, it could be like a comeback win or something like that, like something that makes you go, oh, shit, this team is really doing something this year. The Pelicans haven't had that yet. And our star players, the big three being C.J. McCollum, Zion Williamson, and... Brandon Ingram weren't really having noticeable seasons, I would say. Like, they were all doing really good. Like, if you look at the stats, they're having very fine seasons. But they're not having, like, those seasons that make you go, wow, like, these guys are are kicking ass, right? And that might be the reason why none of the Pelicans players made the All-Star game. Because Zion is averaging 22 points, five rebounds, and very close to five assists. Those are good numbers. Those aren't elite numbers, but those are good numbers. But he also isn't being the Zion that we're used to, right? Like the slam dunk Zion. The Zion is blocking shots and all that. Until, and again, I'll mention these past two games in a little bit, until these past two um, games. But before that, Zion wasn't really having like that exciting season. Ingram is averaging 21.8 points, five rebounds, and close to six assists. Good numbers again. 
CJ McCollum is averaging 19 points, four rebounds, and four assists. Now, granted, those are definitely not all-star numbers, but CJ has probably probably been our best consistent player this whole season, if we're just being real. And I was just shocked. I was like, damn, man. Like, I thought at least Zion being a big name in popularity-wise, 22, 5 and 5. That I thought that would be a guaranteed all-star spot for him. But I'm just shocked at how his popularity has waned. And I'm shocked that. The Pelicans, even though we are 29 and 21, like the national media doesn't seem to care. The casual fan base in New Orleans doesn't seem to care yet. And I'm like, damn, like what does the team have to do? What does the team have to do? I'm not going to say, oh, this is an uh, uh, indictment on the NBA and this is just horrible. And I'm going to go outside and protest that we have zero all-stars. But I was shocked by that. And it's just it confirmed to me just it's been a weird season so far for the Pelicans. Like the Pelicans are, by all accounts and purposes, having a damn good year. But it just doesn't feel like it's an exciting year. It doesn't feel like it's an exciting year. No All-Stars. We haven't had that big moment yet. I mean, it's a very weird year. Now, if that means that we had to have this slow, weird, quiet type season, but it means we're going to be in the playoffs in April and actually do the damn thing, sign me the hell on up. I ain't going to complain at all but I'm just talking in the moment right now as of February the 6th. It's been a very, very weird year. And I was a little bit surprised that we had zero All-Stars. I hope that it motivates the team. I hope that they took that as a, a kick in the butt. I hope they take that as a chip on their shoulder to say, oh, we're going to show these motherf- We're going to show these assholes. We're going to show these assholes. We ain't got no All-Stars, huh? No, let, let, let's make that become a narrative if we make the playoffs, wow, the Pelicans are kicking ass in the playoffs and they had zero all-stars. Use that as motivation, as fuel. That's what the great ones do. They find any reason, any which way to find fuel to motivate them to get, take it to another level. Use that Pelicans players to go to the next level. And maybe they already have because since we have not been <coughs> named with zero all-stars, since they announced the backups and it was official that there was going to be no Pelicans all-stars, the Pelicans are undefeated, folks. The Pelicans are undefeated, and they've had two exciting games. So I just mentioned how it was a weird season, right, that we haven't had those those big moment games, like those games that make the fan base say, oh, shit. I think, I think we might have finally had that this past Friday. We played the San Antonio Spurs. And if you live on Twitter or if you watch my YouTube video, me and my wife, we went to that game. A little backstory for everybody. Apparently, I have this cloud over my head that I'm a curse to our teams whenever I travel to watch them on the road. I know it's crazy. Who would think, right? Mr. This shit more than the game is a jinx. Just because I've lost a few road games the past few years, suddenly now I'm a jinx. And so, (laughs) so when I told Twitter that I was going to the game, boy, they, uh, <laughs> in, 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 in a fun way, by the way, don't take this, through. in a fun way, they lit my ass up. They were like, hell no, John, don't stay home, stay home. And I'm like, it's the Spurs, guys. It's the worst team in the league. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to not go to that game. I'm going to that game. And I, and I, and I guaranteed, I had guaranteed that the Pelicans were going to win that game. And boy, did I look like a goddamn dumbass for Three and a half quarters because the Spurs was playing us very tight. <laughs> the Spurs were playing us very close. And I was like, oh, shit, maybe I am a jinx. But you know what happened? This is what happened. What I said, this shit more than a game. Are you serious? What you do? 
Why are you crying? Big allegations out in bad luck, huh? Come on now. I told you. I told you this shit more than the game. Okay. Oh, Bruh, I used to pray for times like this to rhyme like this, so I had to grind oh like that to God. shine like this in a matter of time oh. I spent on some locked up shit in the back of the paddy wagon. Oh, I got, I got out of here. See my dream control. I know it's control. It was time to learn the game, and I said, yeah, I do. This shit Stop. more than the game. This shit more than the game. I knew it. I knew it. I'm never leaving. What? I'm not leaving. They're gonna have to drag me out here. <laughs> Folks, you cannot, you cannot, you cannot fake that passion. Yes, I I turned this shit more than a game into a brand. I monetized it. You're damn right. I'm a small businessman. Give me a little credit, but that shit is from the heart. I cannot fake passion like that, brother. I live this shit more than the game. Every time I go to a road game, I don't give a damn if we're playing the Harlem Globetrotters or if we're playing the Washington Generals. I'm treating every road game that I go to as if it's a championship on the line because this shit more than the game. That was a damn good game too, man. Zion versus Wimby. Y'all saw the block. Y'all saw Zion with the game winner. Man, that was finally, I was like, Damn, maybe that was finally that moment game that we need to have. I know it was the San Antonio Spurs. I know they had the worst record in the league. Maybe that was finally that big moment game to get the fans on board. Because then, last night, we whooped the Raptors' ass. Brandon Ingram made five straight threes, had 41 points. Team was locked and loaded. Team looking like they're on the jail right now. I want to see what we do tomorrow against the Los Angeles Clippers, okay? We're going above our weight class tomorrow. I want to see. I don't mind if we lose, like my dog Antonio Daniel says. It's okay to lose, but you got to show that this shit more than the game. The past few games, the Pelicans have been showing us that this shit more than the game. That's all we ask for as a fan base. Winning, of course, is very, very helpful. We love winning in New Orleans. But just play like this shit more than the game. Zion on Friday against the Spurs, maybe he was motivated against Wimby. He showed me that Duke Zion. He showed me that Zion. That I was like, that's the Zion that we got hyped up for when we drafted him. Maybe he knew that I was in the building, so he wanted to show out for me. I have that effect, I, I believe. But that's that this shit more than the game energy I like. Brennan Ingram last night, he saw a team that was on the rocks against the Raptors. He said, oh, y'all not going to fight us back? I'm going to put my goddamn foot up y'all ass. Gave him 41. He says, go back to Canada. Tell Drake we say hi. That's a this shit more than the game energy I want to see, man. That's a this shit more than the game energy that can capture the New Orleans fan base's attention while the Saints are in this purgatory that we are in. So I hope the Pelicans keep it up. I hope that they're motivated that they have zero All-Stars. And to everybody, to everybody who say that Jono was a curse, how do you like me now? Because a win is a win. Whether it's a one-point win or whether it's a 100-point win, a win is a win. Now, with that said, I know that I still have to remove my courage from the Saints road games, but we'll worry about that in September. <laughs> Shout out to the Pelicans, man. They, that was a damn good game. They're doing a the damn thing right now. Big game tomorrow. I just hope they put up a fight. I don't need them to win. I want them to win. If they win, ooh, watch out for me. But put up a fight. Keep showing that this shit more than the game. All right? Let's hear another word from one of our sponsors, and then we are going to get it, folks. To the voicemails. Let the good times roll this Mardi Gras, folks, with the exclusive, brand new, first time ever, this shit more than a game Mardi Gras edition shirts. You can buy the shirts for only $28.03 at www.journalbars.com or this shit more than a game.com. Make sure you have your swag this carnival season so we can let the whole world know. And not only is this shit more than a game, but this shit more than a Tuesday. Happy Mardi Gras, folks. Les aies bon ton roulé. All right, I appreciate everybody who left a voicemail uh, this week. Again, I know that it's the off season, so there's not much for fans, or Saints fans at least. I mean, I know that the, the foundation of this show is built on the Saints, so I know I'm not going to get as many voicemails anymore as I got during the regular season but i still have like those consistent callers who call every single week and i do appreciate that and this is a friendly reminder that even though it's the off season you guys are welcome to call 24 7 365 at 504-484-9170 if you want to talk about what 
is on your mind and it could be about the saints it could be about the pelicans it could be about anything yeah if you if you got to ask me a question you want to know my thoughts about the rock and cody rose and roman reigns drama in the wwe you want to know my thoughts about Taylor swift winning album of the year or uh, what jay-z said in his acceptance speech for the dr dre grammy honor award i'm an open book so use that life, uh, use that voicemail at 504-484-9170 and leave a voicemail at the following people just did. This shit is more than a goddamn on voicemail. To all of you dumb ass, Dennis Allen and Derek Carr supporters, Mike was right. There's a reason that nobody wants to be our all seat because dumb ass and dumb chica are losers. Nobody want to work with them two fucks. Get it in your fake skull. Those of y'all who think they're going to do something. And as y'all know, Brother Man's Prime here. I am a Winston fan. I know he's going to be going somewhere else possibly, but he's getting a last laugh because Derek Carr went 9-8 and eight for a nine-year veteran before he joined the Saints. Then the Saints paid a shitload of money for a bucket of shit Carr. The Saints possibly had that same record. With Jameis, are even better. Derek Carr throws his teammates under the dumbass Allen, apologizes to the Falcon team. Come on, man. I remember when the Falcons kicked our ass back in the 70s. I think it was 65 to nothing in the 70s. So, please, stop supporting this dumbass and this dumb child. They are fucking losers, both of them. Nobody want to work with them two fucks. Nobody. Now they got to scrap the bottom of the barrel. Don't be surprised. They're going to get somebody that nobody ever heard of. Because if I was Ron McCurry, the brother that everybody thinks should have got the job of calling some players, I would just say, fuck y'all. I'm out of here. Y'all showing me disrespect. Because none of these big name people's coming here in the first goddamn place. And that's all I'm going to say. Who that? And have a great day. Brother May is prime out. So I take back what I said earlier in the show when I said this is the part of the season, off-season now, where the emotions start to subside. Clearly not with Mage Prime. <laughs> Clearly not with Mage Prime. Mage Prime actually sent that call before we hired Clint Kubiak, so I would love to know his opinion now. But either way, clearly I was wrong when I said that the fan base's emotions are starting to subside. Thanks for the call, Mage. It's a Sam from the West Bank, mm. and it is the best bank. And, Jono, I'm calling at halftime of the Spurs-Pelicans game because I saw on Twitter you say you were going to the game, and everybody was saying that you are a curse, and clearly they are right because ain't no way, ain't no way, Jono, we should be down to the worst team in the league right now at halftime. I don't care what happens the rest of the game. I don't care if we come back and win. You're bad luck. I'm going to let the game continue to play out and see what the final result is. But if we lose this game, Jono, if we lose this game to the worst team in the league, on behalf of everybody who watches your content, you will hereby be banned from attending any road games for the Pelicans or the Saints. Well, I did appreciate when Sam left that voicemail at halftime. And true to his word, he did call back after we got the win. Capital W I N, the win. This is Sam from the West Bank. Like I already told y'all, it is the best bank. All right, the game just ended and the Pelicans pulled out a great victory, but that was still a little too close for comfort, folks, right? I think it was a little too close for comfort. I don't know. I still think we might need to ban John from going to any road games because, man, ain't no reason why we should have been in a struggle with the San Antonio Spurs. We might have to get a jury of your peers, John, to decide if you are allowed to go to any more road games. Clarissa can go, but not you, John. No, I mean, I don't believe in curses and voodoo and all that stuff, but dang, bro. I'm going to say this, though. I was thinking about the Pelicans, but as far as the Saints, you definitely cannot go to any road games next season. I mean, the team is probably going to be bad, but still, we just don't need all that bad juju in one place. And I'm sure they're going to let you know in the comments and on your Twitter if you are allowed to go to any more road games. But over here in the West Bank, the best bank, the best bank, I'm going to say that twice for Evan, dumbass. You, Jono, are not allowed to go to any road games. Let's see go to the road games. We can use his positivity for road games, but you, Jono, no. And while I'm on the line, let me say, I actually do like the Saints hiring QBAC. 
I think that his running concepts are going to be very welcome. I think Alvin Kamara should be very happy with the signing. I think that Elvin still has some good years left in him. And I think Kubiak is going to make him have a remember me type year where he shows the world that he is still as good. And even on the same level of guys like Christian McCaffrey. So I'm not saying that we're going to suddenly be a great team or anything like that. But I do think it was a good signing. But we'll see. But at the end of the day, the only thing that really matters is that, John, right now you are on probation. And we as a community are going to decide about your future and if you are allowed to go to any more role games. This shit more than a game, right? You got them right, this shit more than a game. I don't get it. We won. We won. Why is a fan stood on my ass about being a curse? We won. They don't do style points in the NBA. It's not college football. They're not going to say, oh, well, they beat the Spurs by one point in February, so we're going to have to knock them down a pack. We won. A win is a win. We won, Sam. From the West Bank? And see, that's why I, as I always knew Sam was for the shit, man, because the East Bank is the best bank anyways. East Beast over here. Come on now. We won, Sam. We won. Give me some credit. All right, well, it's official. It's safe to hire Clint Kubiak as the offensive coordinator. And I'm not going to lie, I think the offense will improve, but we'll have to see. But you know what's crazy is that I am currently, I have a cold, I'm currently sick, and my phone card's not working, yeah, I'm still calling on the damn show. Because I know the script was in the game. I don't care if I'm sick, I don't care if I have a broken arm and a broken leg, still getting my opinion off on this show. Because I'm keeping my perfect attendance a lot. And yet I've still been on more shows than Sean and Evan. Mm. Man, they that's just crazy. I'm a view when you have been on more shows than freaking Sean and Evan. But anyways, I'm just going to give you my opinion. Dennis Allen, you got your OC, you got your quarterback, and you got your team. So if you still somehow mess this up, I'm going to be on your head top. This is your last chance. To be honest, this is your third last chance. But now this is your actual last chance. You shall mess this up. We're going to buy you a ticket to Denver, so you can join Carmichael, so you can join Peyton. Don't mess this up, alright? But yeah, who that for life? I'm sick, and I'm still calling on the show. Because this shit more than the game. I'm, I'm telling you, boy, Mikey might be young, but he exhibits that this shit more than a game energy. My man called why he had a cold. I appreciate I see you in the chat too right now, Mikey. I appreciate that. Mikey said he's on the show more than the actual co host of Evan and Sean. Uh, Sean, at this point, is like just, uh, y'all got to understand, Sean is more, more like a, a special guest more than a co host. Like whenever Sean is on, treat that as a special guest. Uh, and also, again, guys, this isn't like the biggest show. So, uh, to be serious for a moment, like I, you, I can't promise or even expect to have Ziggy and Evan and Sean on every Tuesday uh, and, you know, take time out their personal life when, to be honest, just being transparent, like the show isn't paying their bills, right? Like they're not making money off this. They're doing it out the kindness of their hearts. So uh, granted, obviously the show is a lot more fun when we do have those guys on the show, but just treat Sean almost as if he's a special guest at this point. Evan and Ziggy are going to uh, definitely do their best to, you know, make it when they can. But obviously, if they have some personal stuff that they got to deal with uh, in their lives, I can't expect them. Nor should we all demand that they be on the show every Tuesday. Grant, you know, hey, if there was ever a day, and this is the dream, this is the goal, right? If there was ever a day that this show is making, like, money, money, and, like, I'm able to, like, really, you know, break off some dollars to them you know for their time and you know because we build the monster with this show absolutely i'll be like y'all better be on the goddamn show every week but until then while we are building it just know this as long as y'all got Jono, y'all don't need the rest who man wow just wow wow <laughs> just when I, just when I was thinking we were gonna hit rock bottom, man, I just uh, I see the news: the Saints are planning to hire Clint Kubiak, 49ers passing game coordinator, as our offensive coordinator. And I'm like, holy shit! Like they actually pulled a good decision out of their ass. <laughs> good on them, man. Good on them. The only thing I can say about this: great decision, great, awesome, A plus decision. Okay, he's 36 years old. He's young. He's a uh, very innovative. He's working with Brock Purdy, and Brock Purdy has been having a good year. Or well, actually, I would say a great year. His history and play calling, offensive play calling, not too bad, not too shabby, but a little shaky. But of course, I mean, again, he's young, you know, so he doesn't have as much experience as others. We're gonna try to take a chance on him to see if upgrade the play calling and improve it for the Saints. And I'm so 
happy, dude. And the reason for that is not because I'm expecting like a deep playoff run or a 10 win season. I'm still expecting a mid season just because Dennis Allen is still the head coach. We should have fired his ass too, just like Pete Carmichael, but that's topic for a different video. But the reason why I am happy is because we're at the very least changing, at the very least trying something new. That's what I always wanted. That's what I was so desperate for last year, man, to change it up, to try something new. Will it succeed? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe it will. But at the very least, we're taking a chance. And that is what I want from the Saints every single year. I want improvement. I want change. I want new. Not sticking with the same shit and being like constant. Like, you know how a line on the graph goes constantly and doesn't increase or decrease? I don't want that shit, dude. I want an increase or a slight decrease and then goes into a bigger increase. That's what I want from the Saints. So, good, great decision. Glad I could finally make one positive voice fail about the Saints for once. See y'all later. What up, Coach Mack? That's my cousin, y'all. Maybe I'll have him on the show since Ziggy and Sean and Evan are too good to come on the show in the offseason. <laughs> Speaking of Ziggy, Ziggy also says, we won nine games with Dennis and Pete. Imagine now that we got a new OC. <laughs> so y'all see? That's how they get you. That's how they get you. They already get in Ziggy. Ziggy already getting the hype in his blood. That's how they get you. That's why Mickey Loomis don't be caring about my rants. He's like, man, I don't care. I know what I'm going to do is I'm going to hire a coach, uh, sign a free agent, they're going to get the fans hype. But that was a good call. That was a good call. I appreciate that. Oh, you're ready for it. The Super Bowl or my draw? The shit more game. It was Kyle by. Why, yes, Kyle. I am ready for the Super Bowl and I am ready for Mardi Gras. Hey, this is Raven Sports Media back with another voicemail. I'm going to say this first. I see y'all voted on my um, Instagram about my new podcast name. It's doing like a new show. I might not be going live like when I first started, but I'm going to post some videos on it. I think I'm going to go with y'all voted Purple Bird, but I'm actually going to go with Death on Wings podcast because i feel like that grabs the people's attention more anyways you know my life has been hell you know hearing from all these key fans and all that but you know taylor swift is at the super bowl and all that he gets tired of that i just hope the 49ers win but enough about that let's talk about the thing they're expected to hire clint kubiak as their new office of coordinator to replace pete carmichael he's in the super bowl right now because he's with the 49ers. The last day fans are yet again excited, and there's nothing wrong with that. I I'm kind of more excited too, you know, it's not guaranteed to work, but I do expect to see at least somewhat of an improvement in the Saints offense. I can't say that it's going to get worse, because it can only get better from here for what from what we've seen so far. I don't think Derek Carr is going to get better, but what I will say is that now with a new offensive scheme from Clint Cooper, it will make him look better, because he will be more accurate. He will have a better offensive line. I feel like they're, they're going to play better and that he's going to get more comfortable in the pocket where he, he can be more accurate with his passes. And I think that will get the Saints more wins under Dennis Allen. Do I think Dennis Allen is going to be better? Not really. But do I think the Saints overall is going to be better? We just have to see because we just got new offense coordinator. I do think the offense will be somewhat better, like I said. But we'll have to wait and see. All the guys says, go Ravens fuck all day, baby. Who that this shit mode the game? So it feels like the general consensus is that majority of the fans are on board with the Clint Kubiak signing and that they feel like it's going to improve the offense tremendously. And so then we will see if an improved offense means we finally, after – Three years without Drew Brees make the playoffs. I see my dude St. G on Twitter or X, whatever the hell Elon calls it today. Plus, and I'm glad. I appreciate everybody who's watching on Twitter or X, by the way. He says, I can't watch the Super Bowl. If I see Taylor Swift on my TV, I might shoot the TV. You tell that to the wrong person, my dude St. G, because I love me some Taylor Swift. I'm not even a Taylor Swift music fan. But I just find the whole thing, like, it's 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 cute, I guess. It's, 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 it's football. It's fun. It's entertainment. I don't mind it. I wish Eminem was in the Super Bowl with the Lions, that would have been a great little storyline. But hey, if y'all are not going to be uh, the big Taylor Swift fans this Sunday, then yeah, you might not want to watch because I'm pretty sure CBS is going to have a camera literally dedicated to her this Sunday. Especially after she won Album of the Year at the Grammys this Sunday. Oh man, this is like setting up for all the conspiracy theorists to say, this is all rigged, right? This is all rigged. We'll see. 
This is James. Just James. And this is my Super Bowl pick. Okay. Just my Super Bowl pick. Okay. And I am going with, drum roll please, the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm. This is James. Mm. Just James. Signing out. Psych. Did y'all think I was done? Y'all thought y'all had me gone for a second? DJ, please. Oh, no. Cause the play is gonna play, 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 play. And the haters gonna hate, 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 hate. Baby, I'm just gonna shake, shake, shake. Shake it off, a uh, shake it off. Her break is gonna break, 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 break. And the fake is gonna fake, 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 fake. I'm just gonna shake, 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 shake. Shake it off, shake it off. Tells to get close his eyes and guard his ears because this is a tell the Swift Bowl and tell the Swift will be a Super Bowl champion. And if Ziggy doesn't like that, he can just hate, hate, hate because we're just gonna shake it off, a uh, shake it off. Mm hmm. I done done it again, y'all. I done done it again. Let the good times roll this Mardi Gras, folks, with the exclusive, brand new, first time ever, this shit more than a game Mardi Gras edition shirts. You can buy the shirts for only $28.03 at www.journalbars.com or thisshitmorethanagame.com. Make sure you have your swag this carnival season so we can let the whole world know. Not only is this shit more than a game, but this shit more than a Tuesday. Happy Mardi Gras, folks. Les a bon ton roulé. And in the spirit of those last few calls, it is now time to make the biggest pick of the John O'Bone Show season. And that is, we are going to pick who do we have in the Super Bowl. And of course, I want to know in the chat, who do you guys have winning? We have the San Francisco 49ers versus the Kansas City Chiefs. Who do you guys have winning the Super Bowl this Sunday? Do you think it's going to be Patrick Mahomes with yet his another Super Bowl, his third one actually in his very short career? Or do you think Brock Purdy does it? Do you think Brock Purdy and the San Francisco 49ers finally do it? The 49ers have been so close, so close, just so far away for the past few decades. Are they finally going to get their first championship since the 90s? I want to know what you guys think in the comments. Who do you guys have? Before I make my pick, I want to hear from you guys. So I see my dude Slim John Under says he has the San Francisco 49ers. And my dude Slim South 504 says he has the Kansas City Chiefs. And my dude Mikey says he has the Kansas City Chiefs. I would like to know what Evan and Sean and Ziggy pick, but they're not on the show. So I don't know. I don't know. I see the Traders Playbook. We don't even need them. We don't need their picks. They always go wrong anyway. The Traders Playbook says his father-in-law is a huge 49ers fan, so he is riding with the Niners. And my dude, Yon Hitter, says that he also thinks that it's going to be the San Francisco 49ers. I think, guys, I know that the world, I guess, isn't, quote-unquote, excited about this game because there are two teams that, I guess, everybody is over with. But uh, I think it's going to be a good game. I think... And I'm shocked because I didn't necessarily think that the Chiefs were a top-of-the-line team throughout this whole season. That just shows you the magic of Patrick Mahomes. And the question now is, can the Patrick Mahomes magic continue for yet another week? And can the Chiefs do it? Because I'm telling you, Brad, the Chiefs win this Sunday and the Chiefs become Super Bowl champions back-to-back. -back. I, I say the past few weeks, I mean, God bless the AFC. God bless the NFL. Because if Patrick Mahomes can bring this team to a championship, my God, imagine when the Chiefs actually upgrade their positional players. Imagine when the Chiefs actually get more talent. Because right now the Chiefs are an above average team, in my opinion, with an elite, maybe greatest of all time quarterback. So imagine when they actually are able to get better players on that team. If they are going to win a championship this Sunday, then God bless the NFL. Because Patrick Mahomes is about to run shed on the NFL for the next decade or so. With that said, though, I haven't been a believer in the Chiefs this whole damn postseason. I definitely wasn't a believer in the Chiefs this regular season. 
they continue to prove me wrong, well, here's an invitation for them to prove me wrong one more time because I am picking the San Francisco 49ers. I believed all season long that the 49ers from top to bottom were the best team in the NFL. Now, when the Ravens whooped that ass on Christmas Day, it did give me some trepidation that, oh, maybe it's the Ravens year. But Patrick Mahomes said, nope. <laughs> so God bless the 49ers. Now they don't have to worry about playing Baltimore. I think the 49ers are top to bottom the best team. I think Brock Purdy is going to do just enough. He doesn't have to be the he doesn't have to be Patrick Mahomes. When you have an elite team, you don't need to be a Patrick Mahomes, but you need to do just enough to win the game. And I think Purdy is going to do what Jimmy G could not do in 2019, and that is lead the 49ers to a Super Bowl. It's it's a great, it's a great uh storyline because you got uh, in my opinion, elite team with a above average quarterback whereas with the chiefs you got an elite quarterback with an above average team what is going to be more powerful is the elite quarterback going to shine or is the elite team going to shine i can't wait i'm looking forward to the game i really am i'm not going to be thrilled with the 49ers getting another championship but hey at least it's not the falcons at least it's not the cowboys at least it's not the panthers at least it's not the bucks so we are going to see we are going to see, but I think it's going to be a very good game. And for all the tell the Swift haters out there, congratulations. You might get a shot of Taylor Swift crying because her boyfriend did not bring home another Super Bowl. If that makes it any better, if that makes it any better, at least you can find comfort in that. Oh, we might see Taylor Swift crying because the Chiefs lost. But we'll see. We'll see. I see Jesse also picks the Chiefs. I see Jerry. What up, Jerry? The OG Jerry picks the 49ers. St. G says, imagine the Chiefs with Michael Thomas. Well, all this bitching Michael Thomas is doing on Twitter about wanting to play with great quarterback play. He better go to a team that's offseason that has an elite quarterback for all that. My dude Carl Dunn. What's up, Carl? Carl always shows me love on Twitter and always shows me love after every show. He has the 49ers winning in overtime. That would be a good game. Then if it goes to overtime, that means we have a damn good game on our hands. My dude Johnny Bravo says, let's go Niners. Bank. No, hold on. Uh, hold on, Johnny. I know that you're a Saints fan. I know you just don't want the Chiefs to win, but Niner game, bang, bang, all that, that's sacrilegious in the who that nation. Damn sure in the John O'Bone show community. So uh -uh. I know you could, you could, I'm not saying you can't cheer for the 49ers, but we ain't going to be saying they, they fight song or all that, okay? And I appreciate my dude, Young Hitter, with the super chat for $2. And he says that the 49ers are going to win. And I agree. I agree. The 49ers are going to win. St. G says that I'm too young to remember when the 49ers, you know, uh, running ramp, uh, running, you know, rampant on the NFL. Uh, true story. I don't think I am too young. Like, I was there. I wasn't, like, fully developed as a human, obviously. I was a little kid. But I remember the 49ers being, you know, just a dawn in the same sun. And yet and still, if the Falcons continue to be, like, our number one rival, right, even though the 49ers were just owning the whole NFC West. Uh, when they were in, when we were in that division, um, I could be. I, I, no, I don't want to give that story out because y'all gonna get mad at me if I say it. Uh, my mom and dad and family know. Ah, I'll, I'll say. Uh, I, I, for some reason, as a kid, I, I grew an early, uh, a early desire to be an antagonist, to be a devil's advocate. So, for whatever reason, I was a young kid. Don't hate me. I saw the whole family cheering for the Saints, and I was like, well, I want to be different. So I kind of, as a kid, was cheering for the 49ers. And it wasn't even because the 49ers were like a dynasty. I think I did it because I liked their colors. And if I remember in my young John O'Brien, I remember I, like, I was just watching TV one day, and the 49ers was like on a commercial, probably because they were always winning. So, of course, they get the commercials. And I was like, oh, that's the team I'm going to cheer for. And I'm going I'm to show my family. I'm going to cheer for the 49ers. So, uh, yeah. It was very on this shit more than the game like of me. Now, again, I was just a kid. I was just a kid. I was a kid. Don't hold that against me. Don't stake me to the cross. I was a kid. Once once my balls dropped, let's be, once my balls dropped, it was who that for life. It was this shit more than the game. But as a kid, I was like, oh, I'm a 49ers fan. Woo, yeah. I'm not too young. I'm not too, I was dumb. I was dumb, but I, I remember when the 49ers was a dawn on the same side because I was being an asshole child, being like, I'm going to show my family. I'm going to chill for the 49ers because I got to be different than everybody else. Thank God they slapped some sense into me. Shout out to the family, man. Thank God they slapped some sense into me. And ever since then, it's been who that for life, always and forever. Y'all know why, right? This shit more than the game. <laughs> Traders Playbook with another super chat. I appreciate you so much, Traders Playbook. Truly, you are this shit more than the game certified. 
He says if the Chiefs win, Travis Kelsey is going to propose to Taylor in the script there. If, if, if he proposes, that should have scripted. I'll give you that. Because I'm like, they've been dating for like five months. They've been dating for So if he proposes after the Super Bowl, that is some scripted shit. That is some public relations type thing where Travis Kelsey is trying to really become a Hollywood star. If he proposes after the game, we'll see. You know the NFL is loving it, though. You know the NFL is loving it. Sandra says, shame on me. I, I'm just, I, I am nothing if not honest, okay? I am nothing if not honest. I, I know. I was a kid. I was dumb. We all do dumb things as kids, okay? I cheered for the 49ers as a kid. But I, when I say I cheer for them, like, I cheered and, like, I didn't watch any of the games. I didn't know nothing about football. I was just like, oh, yeah, I'm a 49ers fan, right? Because I wanted to be different from the family. But, again, when I matured, it was this shit more than the game for here on out. And I was a Saints fan. Sometimes, regrettably, I was a Saints fan because, good Lord, have mercy, have they put us through some hell, huh? <laughs> but, hey, we we'll always have 2009. See, Travis Playbook is on my side. As a kid, he had Michael Vick. Like, you know, like when you're a kid, you, you, it takes a while for you like to really see, like, you know, like what the sports life is all about. And then when you are mature enough, that's when you can really fully get into it, right? So when I was mature enough, I think it was like my – beginning of middle school days like that's when i got all in on the saints and i was like i'm in i'm in i'm in because i was a wrestling i'm gonna be honest guys i was a, like before i was even like all in on football i was a wrestling fan like wrestling was my passion wrestling i'm still a wrestling fan by the way but wrestling was my passion i was all in on wrestling i wanted to be a wrestler this guy right here he was my drew Brees as a kid he still is <laughs> he still is i was all on wrestling so then when my wrestling love started to subside that's when football really took over I mean, I'm turning this episode into a goddamn John O'Bonnes biography. We'll, we'll, we'll wait for that when the John O'Bonnes biopic comes out or whenever I'm big enough to do a biography uh, video. <laughs> but all I have to say, I guess I'm going back to my roots this Sunday because I have the San Francisco 49ers winning the Super Bowl this Sunday. And speaking of wrestling, I see some fans right now because it's one of the hottest topics, whether you're a wrestling fan or not, it's talking about the Rock. The Rock came back last Friday and all but signified that he is going to be at WrestleMania this April to face his cousin Roman Reigns for the WWE Championship. And you would think that that would be like a, a universal lauded match by wrestling fans because it's a dream match that wrestling fans have always wanted to see. Yet, you would be surprised because the fans of wrestling have been on The Rock's ass since last weekend because they are mad that the guy that they wanted to be in the main event, a guy by the name of Cody Rhodes, should be the one main event for the uh, <laughs> WrestleMania storyline. It's a whole thing. If Ziggy was on the show, I actually would have died more into it. And I actually might do a special John O'Bone show because I'm going to be honest. The wrestling fan base is a good niche to get into on t YouTube. And granted, because it is the off season, I mean, I, there's only so much Saints talk that. They've been helping me lately with these goddamn Michael Thomas tweets and stuff, but there's only going to be so much Saints talk to do. I'm going to have to start doing, like, some other topics and stuff. And don't be surprised. I think you guys have to tune in, but, like, when I do wrestling shows and things like that, it's because, you know, I do still watch wrestling, and there's a good audience when it comes to the wrestling thing. Uh, but Trey's playback, I'll give my opinion right quick. I am also excited for The Rock and Roman Reigns match. I actually am, and I understand the decision. It's, a, it's, a, it's the obvious business move. The Rock is the biggest name in Hollywood. Why would you not want The Rock main event your Super Bowl? I get it. I think the way they went about it was absolutely stupid. The fact that it is now a polarizing match, the fact that The Rock got booed on Monday Night Raw last night, the fact that they were chatting Rocky sucks, that is crazy. Like, how do you botch? How do you fumble? A Roman Reigns versus The Rock dream match. And that's what the WWE did. And now they are going to be at risk of The Rock and Roman getting booed out the building in Philadelphia in April when they main event because everybody thought that it should have been Cody Rhodes. There was a way to get to The Rock versus Roman Reigns main event without having to make the Cody Rhodes character and storyline for him look like a goddamn dumbass. And they botched it. They fumbled it. And so now I'm a big Rock fan. Stone Cold is clearly above my number one, but The Rock is right. A little bit below my number two. So to see all the wrestling fans like going off on the rock and calling him egotistical, calling him stupid, calling him unworthy or unneeded in the wrestling world, that's a shot to me. I'm like, God damn, how can you fumble this WWE? How do you fumble a dream match between the rock and Roman Reigns? I might do a show on that, Traders Playbook. I might do a show on that, and maybe the algorithm will bring the wrestling fans to the channel because I know me and Ziggy got a lot to say about that. I'm not gonna talk about it too much on this show because I grant. This is mostly Saints fans and NFL fans, but yeah, that was crazy. That was crazy. All I have to say, guys, thank you so much for joining the John Bone Show this week, man. 
Great time. Now, here's the thing. Here's a here's a uh, announcement. Speaking of like streaks ending, uh, Cinema John, uh, I, I, me and Ziggy have been actually talking about doing a, a WrestleMania show, uh, possibly like where we go live during WrestleMania. I'll see. I'll see. I'm thinking about it. I'm really thinking about it. like this, this is the option. This is the time for me to experiment with the channel and try to bring non Saints fans to see what I'm building over here too. I love the Saints fans. This show and this channel is going to be built off of the New Orleans and Louisiana area. But you know, if I want to continue to go to the next levels, I gotta you know talk about other things too to get other fan bases to take notice of what we're doing to take notice of the fact that this shit is more than a game. All right, but also speaking of streaks ending. The streak of me during the road games losing ended on Friday and next Tuesday, the Tuesday streak of the John O'Bone show comes to an end because I will not be going live next Tuesday for obvious reasons because this shit more than a Tuesday is Mardi Gras. So no, I will not be going live next Tuesday. So all that to say, this is kind of a great uh, way for the show to end its Tuesday night uh, streak because I made a commitment to myself before the season. I said, I really want to go on the stream every week and I want to be consistent with it. And I didn't even think that it was going to be every Tuesday, but it wind up working out that way. And it's almost a miracle that every Tuesday since week one of the NFL season, I have been available to do this show every Tuesday at 6 45 PM. So from week one, all the way till now, Super Bowl week, the John O'Bone show was live every Tuesday at 6 45 p.m. Central Time. And I thank you guys so much for rocking with me every Tuesday. Now, I'm not, this isn't like some grand, I'm like going forward after next Tuesday, after Mardi Gras, like we're going to still continue to try to make Tuesday like the main night for the show. But I have to say that next Tuesday is going to be the first Tuesday since week one of the NFL season that the John O'Bone show will not be on because. We all will be obviously because my audience is mainly New Orleans and Louisiana. Everybody's going to be celebrating Mardi Gras. I just don't think it makes any sense to go on live on Tuesday when it's Mardi Gras night. Maybe I'm wrong. But I might be too drunk at that point anyway, but <laughs> we will not be on live next Tuesday. So I hope you all have an amazing Mardi Gras. Yes, Sonia. This is not like a the John O'Bone show is ending. I will continue to be doing the show. I'm just saying, and this is probably corny as hell, but very sentimental to me that I will not be on like the Tuesday streak. From week one of the NFL season to today, it ends next week because we will not be going on live Monday. I mean, on Tuesday. Now, speaking of Monday, I'm debating. I am very much debating. Do I go on live this Sunday for the Super Bowl or do I go on live Monday night? Lundy girl. I could go on live Monday. I don't know. I kind of sometimes I let the universe take me to wherever I need to be. So I'm kind of letting the universe decide. I might go on live Sunday. I might go on live Monday. I don't know. I might not go on live next week at all. I might take the week off next week. I do not know. The best thing I can say is hit that bell notification so that when I do go live, or if I do go live, you know when. It would be either Sunday or Monday. I don't know. I'm debating on if I'm going to have enough people actually tune in during the Super Bowl to go live during the Super Bowl. And if I do go live Monday, I really at least want one of the fellas to be available to come chat it up with me on Monday uh, before Mighty Girl. So, We'll see. Now, I might not go on live at all next week. I do not know. I do not know. Which, if that's the case, that's what I have at the bottom. I hope you guys all have a happy, happy Mardi Gras. But I know one thing for sure. is that I will not be on live next Tuesday. So I hope you guys enjoy the hell out of your Mardi Gras. I might go on Sunday during the Super Bowl. I might go on Monday night. I might not go on at all next week. But this is not the end of the John O'Bone show. This is just going to be the end of the streak of me going on live on Tuesdays, okay? So all that to ultimately say thank you guys from week one all the way to Super Bowl week. Every Tuesday, you guys came. You rocked with me. You bought the heat. You helped me grow the show to lengths and bounds that I never thought possible. My first show, I think my peak of audience members was like in the 20 range. And here I am. I've had over 100 people on the show at one point. Right now, we got over 40 people across all platforms. We're slowly but surely, slowly but surely, slowly but surely, gradually building this show alone. And I can't do it without you guys. So I thank you guys. I hope you guys continue to share this show and this channel with all your friends and family. I hope you guys continue to watch. I know the off season is very slow. So like I say, emotion starts to subside. People don't really want to talk. Uh, 
deal with Saints talk or football talk or whatnot as much anymore. So I get it. I knew that the numbers would start dwindling a little bit once our season ended, but I'm hoping to build something that eventually it doesn't matter what day I go on. It doesn't matter what part of the season I go on. It doesn't matter what time of the year I go on. We're going to have a community rocking with this show. And y'all know why? Because this shit more than the game. So I appreciate you guys. Leave it a shit more than the game in the chat before we close out the shot right now. And again, I hope you guys have a great Mardi Gras Tuesday. Come on, man. Everywhere else, it's just Tuesday. Everywhere else, it's just Tuesday. But down here, but down here, down here, I, I appreciate the laser label on Tony Roulet in the chat, y'all. But leave it this shit. There we go. There you go, Sonia. This shit more than a game, man. And this shit more than a Tuesday. This shit more than a Tuesday. New Orleans, man. Greatest city in the world. And be on the lookout, y'all. Because even though I may not be doing live streams and whatnot next week, still undecided. You will get some skits and stuff. I'm not done. The skits are always going to come. So be on the lookout. I appreciate you guys. Yes, indeed. Les Aylons Bon Ton Roulet. And yes, indeed. This shit more than a game. Happy Mardi Gras, folks. Thanks for tuning in. Some people tell me that they slept under their tents all night, only to be told by city officials to take the tents down until later. So a lot of people just having to adjust and roll with the punches, all for the sake of letting the good times roll. I've been out here since about 2 a.m. and I plan on being out here until every parade is over. Don't you have a job? <laughs> I had a job. Had a wife and kids too. My wife was like, my ex-wife was like, you have to choose, me or the kids or Mardi Gras? <laughs> okay, easy. Bye kids. <laughs> Come on man, this Mardi Gras shit more than the game. Richie Davidson says he and his friends have managed to camp out on the parade route since Wednesday night. He says at some point city officials asked that they take their tent down. They came by a few times today. They tried to get us to, you know, move all of our stuff out, but you know, they didn't physically remove us from the spot. So we're still here. Don't know if that was, you know, much appreciated, but we took it down and then promptly put it right back up. Yeah, city officials came by and told me to take my tent down. So I did. You know, I just find it funny though that they can patrol that, but they can't patrol all these carjackers breaking into the vehicles. Make it make sense. The city says these rules have been in place for about three years now, and it's also been enforced. According to the city's website, ladders, canopy tents, and grills must not be placed on the neutral grounds and sidewalks earlier than four hours before the start of a parade. But these folks say come rain or cops, they are determined to have a good night. You're not. Yeah, you're not gonna, uh, you're not gonna kill my carnival. It's not happening. I'm gonna be out here no matter what. Party don't stop over here. I mean, rain, shine, hot, cold, patrol officers, no patrol officers. I'm gonna be right here to secure my spot, to catch my beads. Beads that I instantly plan to throw away the day after. You know, sometimes I ask myself, is it worth it? Especially when somebody comes and parks on the street like five minutes before the parade, gets in front of me and instantly has a better view than me. I ask myself, self, is it worth it? And myself say self, it was definitely worth it. You can visit our website, WDSU.com, for more on those rules. Reporting live from Uptown New Orleans, Shay O'Connor, WDSU. And in the words of Tony Barnes, this is more than a game. It's more than a game. This shit more than a game.